Today we're going to briefly discuss the takedown and setup procedures for a monumental system such as this rotary dryer. With any large system installation, there's going to be some crane expenditures. And the most heavy piece on a rotary dryer system like this will always be the drum proper. This drum typically weighs from 40 to 60,000 pounds. In this instance, the drum weighs about 45,000 pounds. When we dismantle, we pull apart ID fan ductwork, cyclone, and knockout box and move it to the side. Then the key part of dismantle and shipping revolves around this drum and frame. For the end user, it's ideal to be able to unload the drum and set it on the frame the same day to avoid excessive crane bills. Likewise, on our end, we like to unload the drum, load it on a trailer, then immediately load the frame on the trailer so they can get there at the same time. The frame only has four legs. Here in this instance, you've got 24 total bolts to attach the frame to the drum or the legs to the frame before you set the drum. A real quick procedure here. Ideally the next load to ship and as a result receive would be this knockout box. It comes in two pieces and will be wide load and take a little time to set up before you slide it over the end of the drum. Once the knockout box is in place, you can start setting the cyclone and accompanying ductwork. In the meantime, you can be working on the other end and installing the combustion chamber, burner, and blowers. This feed auger will come with the legs removed and slips through a carrier bearing that's inside the drum proper. So there will be about eight feet of screw that slips through this black metal pipe into that bearing. These legs on the combustion chamber will be removed for shipping. The auxiliary air manifold is permanently attached to this combustion chamber. We have some riser legs here so you can get your lift under it and also to allow you to ship it with this air manifold. You'll simply have to add the connecting duct and the auxiliary air blower. As we go down, you'll see that there are a series of bolts to connect the top and the bottom halves of the knockout box. Realistically, it's easier to put that together than slip it over and put the seals on. This counterweighted gravity operated flap gate is integral to air control on this system. It only discharges material whenever the weight matches the weight of the counterbalance. The remaining time this is closed to allow proper airflow throughout the system. Do not remove this flap gate. Do not fix it where it stays open. These are the variable drives. Each of the wires going into these drives will be marked for location. The same will be true for those going to starters. Match those wires. Then when you hook up your main power and check motor rotation, all motors will be rotating in the same direction. If they're operating in the reverse, you'll only have to switch one wire, and that being, or two wires, two wires from the main disconnect here.
There are three thermocouple locations on a system. One here on the combustion chamber. These have already been removed for transport. The next here on the side of the knockout box. And the final one on the elbow leading into the induction fan exhaust blower.